Uh, so thank you again, Miriam Lachance, for your very rational and reasonable Superior Court decision regarding Dennis Galeatitis, uh crappy judgeship as far as I'm concerned. I mean, this guy's a menace. <laughs> his name's was well, his name's Dionysus, Greek, you know, Dionysus Galeatitis, but he shortens Dionysus down to Dennis. Well, Dennis is a menace to <laughs> civil rights and freedoms as far as I'm concerned. Not to mention maybe one or two other things he's a menace to, but certainly in my case, you know, Dennis Galeatitis has suppressed my charter rights and freedoms with little or no reason to do so. Um, and uh, that makes him a menace to charter rights and freedoms, in my opinion, uh, which I'm allowed to have according to the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. I'm allowed to have an opinion, I'm allowed to express it, uh, and that includes asking questions at city council meetings which I was prevented from doing for two years, thanks to Dennis Galeastus, <clears throat> and uh, not to mention the SPVM and Crown Prosecutors and so on, Montreal Unitarians, uh, ultimately. Sue Montgomery, ultimately. Uh, so yeah, Sue Montgomery, former Gazette Justice reporter, is absolutely responsible for shutting down my protest for a couple of years, uh, and she's, been involved in efforts to shut down this protest since at least the mid-2000s. I remember seeing Sue Montgomery sticking her head inside police cars, you know, trying to convince cops to do something to arrest me or ticket me or whatever, you know, in the mid-2000s. Um, she uh, involved herself in an effort to seek a restraining order, peace order against me in 2006, 2007. Um, she was involved in that. In fact, in hindsight, I think she was probably the person who gave the church leadership uh, the idea to do that. Because um, she was, at the time, uh, the Gazette's justice reporter, that is the judicial reporter, court reporter. You know, she would have known about such things as Season, uh, not season, uh, yeah, restraining orders, peace orders, 810s as they're called, because uh, uh, I think it's section 810 of the criminal code or something. So, so, so Montgomery would have been quite familiar with this stuff in the mid 2000s. And then, you know, what do you know, in 2007, the Reverend Diane Rollert, backed by a bunch of uh, church members, uh, sought an 810 against me, you know, and then Sue Montgomery uh, signed a deposition. She was part, directly involved in that, as I said, but she might have been more involved in just signing a deposition. I have reasonable grounds to suspect that she was the one who gave the idea to uh, Diane Rollert and other church leaders to try this approach to suppressing my protest. Um, and they were successful. I get I got one of the worst judges in Quebec court at the time, a roll on mat. You know, uh, when you spoke about roll on mat, well, criminal defense lawyers rolled their eyes. Um, and so, again, another basically incompetent, authoritarian judge. Uh, uh, you know, she granted a restraining order, peace order, whatever you want to call it, 810, even though there really was no grounds to do so. I did not pose a threat to anyone. I never threatened anyone. I, you know, I didn't pose any real danger to anyone's safety, and yet she granted the restraining order. So I basically had a one-year restraining order over the span of the summer of 2007 into 2008, if I remember correctly. And uh, no doubt the church thought that this was the end of the story, you know, that they'd be able to renew this every year kind of thing. And make it indefinite. Well, no, that didn't quite happen. Uh, and when it ended, I resumed my protest very soon after. And they did try to get it reinstated and so on and so forth. You know, there was a fair number of interactions with the police in, uh, you know, 2008, 9, 10 kind of thing. Threatened with uh, more, you know, criminal charges and so on, arrests and so on. Um, but uh, <laughs> in terms of actually being arrested, uh, nothing happened. Um, so it's only in, when Sue Montgomery brought these uh, trumped up criminal harassment charges against me in uh, 
December of 2017 that uh, the Unitarian Church of Montreal was once again able to uh, suppress this protest. And, and uh, make no mistake, although Sue Montgomery on the surface acted as an individual, um, I think it's very probable, almost a certainty, that to some extent, in any case, uh, this was coordinated with the Unitarian Church of Montreal. Um, uh, in fact, I wouldn't be surprised if uh, Sue Montgomery even solicited votes from Montreal Unitarians by telling them, oh, if I get elected mayor, I'm going to make sure that Robin Edgar's uh, protest is shut down. You, know, you vote for me and you get me in as mayor, you know, I'll, I'll uh, make sure that uh, he's not protesting inside the church. I can very easily see that scenario. I'm not saying it actually happened. I don't have proof that it happened. Uh, but I can see Sue Montgomery doing that kind of thing, and I can certainly see her abusing her power and influence as uh, mayor of Cote de Notre Dame de Grasse, to say nothing of Valerie Plant's first deputy mayor, to try and uh, suppress this protest, and which is exactly what she did, you know, at least uh, as an individual. Okay, so we're at 23 minutes, uh, so we got about six minutes of recording time left in this uh, fourth clip, and I think we're gonna wrap it up because um, I do have other things to do today. Um, in fact, there's something I could have done at noon that I won't be doing because I decided to protest instead, uh, but I do have other things, so, so we're not gonna protest for longer than an hour today. Um, I did find that protesting later when people are exiting the church as opposed to when people are entering it actually has some advantages. <laughs> so I may, I may change the timing of my protests. Um, maybe not all the time, but I think there are some times when I'm gonna come later and be protesting as people are leaving the church. Because amongst other things, like one major reason for doing that is because, you know, when people are entering, you know, they're coming to a service, the service is starting, they don't have time to stop and talk and chat. Uh, but I protested some weeks ago, later, because basically I, I basically I just slept in and had breakfast and so on, um, you know, uh, and so I decided, you know what, I, I won't go in early, I'll, but I will protest, you know, as people are exiting. So that's what I did. And they ended up having a long, interesting conversation <laughs> with a first-time visitor to the Unitarian Church of Montreal as she exited the church. Uh, unfortunately, most of that conversation wasn't recorded because my camera battery died after a few minutes. Uh, and that's a shame because it was a really, really good conversation. Uh, and she was very much on side. She understood the issues. She agreed with me. Um, so that was kind of nice. It's unfortunate that that conversation uh, was not recorded because it might have helped to wake Montreal Unitarians up a little bit. So I see we're at almost 26 minutes, so we got about four minutes of recording time left. Um, and uh, so that's it. When We're going to essentially wrap this up and head home um, and do other things. But it's been a pretty good little protest. A uh, few people saw my signs in terms of church membership, a fair number of the public. I was actually surprised how many dog walkers I saw this morning. Not so many cyclists. Uh, as we see, we have the bike path here. And often there's quite a number of cyclists, but you know, we are in uh, mid or December and there's just not that many cyclists uh, <laughs> at the moment. Uh, but there were in September and October getting a fair number of cyclists. We're seeing this uh, protest, including uh, Project Montreal City Councilor Peter McQueen, he came by on his bike one day. I had a little word for him as he went by, reminding him of uh, the issues. Um, so, uh, anyhow, yeah, it's been a pretty good little protest, no major incidents, uh, but it was interesting that this younger member of the church, you know, had it in her head that uh, I was not allowed to be here that they were going to call the police. So I think their, their response to this protest is not to deal responsibly with the issues that I'm protesting. Well, call the police, call the police, call the police, shut them down, silence them. 
don't listen to what he says. You know, don't try to negotiate with him. Don't try to resolve the issues. Just call the police. Call the police. Call the police. Shut them down. Shut them down. Bring bullshit criminal charges against them. That's pretty well being their attitude. Maybe not from the very beginning, but certainly as far back as uh, December 2000 when I was arrested on trumped up criminal charges, which I was rightly acquitted of three years later. Um, so on that note, we are wrapping up this uh, protest. Uh, essentially, this is a fact that Montreal Unitarians have been devoting far, far more time and energy and probably money to shutting down this protest, because I'm sure they've thrown money at lawyers and stuff. Um, who knows, maybe they bribed a few police officers. <laughs> Just a joke there, but but uh, in any case, uh, um, what I'm getting at is if they spent a fraction of the time that they spent to shut down this protest and silence me, this way this uh, the issues would have been resolved. Because yeah. I'm not asking for anything unreasonable. I'm not asking for anything that's out of alignment with any of Unitarian Universalism's seven principles. On the contrary, I'm asking Montreal Unitarians to practice the seven principles of Unitarian Universalism. I'm asking them to uh, practice uh, respect for the interdependent web of all existence. I'm asking them to practice justice, equity, and compassion in human relations. I'm asking them to practice a free and genuinely responsible search for truth and meaning. I'm asking them to practice genuine democracy, not only in the Unitarian Church of Montreal, but in society at large. When they try and shut down a peaceful public protest, that's an anti-democratic act. Peaceful public protest is part of the democratic pro process. You know, when, when you're not able to, to get appropriate response, you know, from a government or an institution or so on, you know, through the normal means, well, well, peaceful public protest is one of the last resorts. Um, so when I'm engaging in peaceful public protest outside the Unitarian Church of Montreal, I am in fact engaged in the democratic process. Um, so, and they're trying to suppress that. They're trying to shut down the protest. When they try to shut down the protest, they're basically being anti-democratic. Um,